Hello everybody, this is the Johnny Mayor, and welcome back to my walkthrough of Link's Awakening. As we plummet into a pit already. Well that is a good omen, isn't it viewers? We just started playing and we're already making mistakes. Wonderful. Well, we are going to be heading through Death Mountain, essentially, which is very similar to Link to the Past. And basically that is for us to be able to access the last couple of dungeons of this game. And uh, we can actually get to a couple of things now that we couldn't before. Now we could have used our hook shot to get across here, but I figured I might as well just wait and get these 50 rupees with the flying rooster. Now I don't think I can push either of these blocks, no. So we're just going to use our little flying friend here to circumvent and get around these different walking areas and also keep us from having to use our Pegasus boots to get through here. Well, that works out pretty well. And this route might look familiar because it's basically the route that we took to get to dungeon number four which was the Angler's Tunnel if you remember. And that's because we had to jump down from here to get into the dungeon. Well we're going to continue onward. We're going to head up these steps and see what we can find up here in the mountains. That rock is a different color. That was kind of weird. Ow. There's not a ton going on up here, but we will be going up to that house in a little bit. First, let's explore this cave area. Ah, weird. So again, all of this you could have uh, managed to get through before with various items that you had in your inventory. But uh, the next room, actually, we wouldn't have been able to get through except with our flying rooster. See that? Yeah, we need to use this guy to get around this corner. And this takes us to the key to access the seventh dungeon. That is the bird key, I think. Yes. I am correct. Imagine that. And that's pretty much what we need the bird for. Now he's just cake at this point. We don't really need him anymore. We can get the rest of the way to the dungeon. But we're going to explore a little bit first. And of course I'm going to abuse him. Not in the animal abuse sort of way, but in the overusing sort of way. I'm not sure there's anything up here. I think it's just, yeah, dead end. Let's just show you where the key is. So we'll head out of here and we'll see what was in that house that was outside. And you may wonder, you know, how are you supposed to know to get this flying rooster in? Well, one of the ways was the phone call with Orira. The other way is actually to talk to the guy inside this house. Now remember, Terran kind of looks like Mario. Well, this guy, if you ask me, kind of looks like Luigi. And he's supposed to give you a hint about the rooster which is supposed to guide you and help you to figure out that basically you have to find him and use him. And I'm not sure there's anything along this northern path, but we'll check it out anyway just in case. This is very reminiscent of Link to the Past. Kind of with the Death Mountain area. You're an enemy, aren't ya? Ow, of course. Now I'm wondering, I think there might have been a secret seashell up here somewhere. But uh, now that we have the level 2 sword, obviously they all changed. So I'm not sure if it uh, just disappeared. Get out of my way, stupid rooster. So we'll head back and we will continue onward. I will be going to the left eventually, but for now, we're going to head back towards the east. And that will take us to the seventh dungeon, which is actually called Eagle's Tower or. Eagle's Nest or something like that. I'm not 100% sure. We have to do a little bit more cave diving or spelunking first. That's a suspicious spot in the wall, isn't it? Let's get our bombs out. They didn't try to hide this one too much. Ugh. Let's get up these stairs. Oh, this is an interesting room up here. You notice all these chests, and from this direction, there is no way you can open all five of them in one go. And that's what you need to do, because as soon as you start opening some of them, the ones you don't open will actually become basically unopenable, if that's a word. 
So you actually have to come at it from below, and I think that was a secret seashell too. But now we can access all the chests, and all they have is 20 rupees in them, so it's not a big deal. But if you do want to get all five, you do have to go out and come back in. Because otherwise, you'll only be able to get four of them. So, I guess it's worth it to get the 100 rupees. Uh, let's do this, and then that, and then that. And that should let us get all of them. Awesome. Although rupees at this point, kind of pointless. We don't really have a ton left to buy. In fact, there's not really anything left to buy other than to just stock up on supplies like arrows and bombs. We're pretty much set for the end of the game. And we're getting closer and closer to Dungeon 7. So a couple more caves to get through. Peace. Die. And even now, I just can't resist the temptation of picking up rupees, even though I don't need them at all. <laughs> it's just so hard to get rid of that habit. Ooh, that wall can be bombed. Wonder what's in there. We shall find out soon enough. Oops. Didn't mean to do that. Run away from the slimes. Yeah, let's head this way. So, you can use the rooster to get across down there at the bottom, or you can use your hook shot to get across at this point. And then just jump. And now we're at the bottom here. And this, uh... A eh, piece of power, but it'll go away if I go inside the cave, so... This is a fairy. So in here is a great fairy who will hopefully restore our hearts. And I need to close my eyes and relax. Well, of course. Oh, yeah. That feels good. You certainly know how to get rid of my stress and tension, great fairy. Thank you. And of course I appreciate the non-Ocarina of Time screech that the Great Fairy likes to emit. That thing still haunts my nightmares. So we need to continue through these caves, of course. And here we are at the top. So basically what we have to do is come over here to the east, put in our key, and presto. The whole tower is gonna spin around like that. And of course we couldn't have just walked behind the tower to get to that. Oh well. But welcome viewers to one of the most convoluted and annoying dungeons in the game. So if you want to get everything in this dungeon you have to do a lot and it takes a long time to do it. I am not going to be doing that. I'm going to be showing you guys the quickest route that I've been able to find which allows us to get all of the important stuff. And so, I will not be exploring this dungeon in depth, I will not 100% it, I am just going to get through it as quickly as possible. And now with the boomerang we can get this treasure chest already. Now normally you have to go around and around and figure out how to get to this from below. But with the boomerang we can bypass all of that. And here's the crux of the dungeon, we need to find a way to take this little steel ball with us and use it. So throw it against the wall here to get it over the rocks, and then let's pull this little switch. Why do we need a steel ball? Well, this dungeon is pretty unique in that it has a bunch of pillars that we have to destroy. And this will make the upper levels of the dungeon accessible, otherwise we can't get to them in the boss. And we have chess pieces. Now this is not vital, it's to get the map. But I figure I'll give it a shot. See if I can get it to work or not. Yeah. My sworn enemy. Come on. One time. <laughs> yes. Alright. There we go. Not too bad. Four or five throws. Now then, let's start working on these pillars. Let's go back and get our steel ball, bring it with us, and we'll take out pillar number one. And there's four in total. 
to be very careful with the steel ball because if it falls off the screen and goes through one of those pits, for example, you lose it and it actually will end up teleporting back to its original location on that little pedestal. So we have to figure out how to move it around by hitting crystal switches and doing all sorts of stuff in this dungeon. So let's progress and I will show you guys how to use it here to take out pillar number two. Mostly we're going to be using our rocks feather and our level two power bracelet. But there we go, we're halfway. Now, don't let that fool you though, the first two pillars are pretty easy to get to. The second two, much more difficult. So let's head towards pillar number three. Push this block, pick it up, and there it is, but we can't get to it just yet. Instead we have to come up here to the north, and this next room has the compass in. But to get it, you have to kill off these little suit guys, and I hate those guys, so I am not going to do that. The compass is not worth it. Little bastards. So now we have to find a way through the dungeon to get over there so we can use the steel ball. So I'm going to show you how to do that. First we have to hit the crystal switch again. So this will allow us to access the original room we came up in next to where the level 2 shield was, the mirror shield. And uh, the point of that is, like the mirror shield in Link to the Past, it lets you block laser beams. So let's bypass by using our boomerang again. And uh, there's a lot of keys you can actually collect in this dungeon, but they're really irrelevant. I mean, they let you get to treasure chests and stuff with, like, rupees in, but... Why can't I avoid getting rupees? But uh, yeah, at this point, oh, I hate these guys. There's not really any reason to do it. So here's the first mini boss, our good friend, and a little bit more difficult with these pits, but the boomerang is super powerful, so he was not hard at all. All right, so these suit guys we have to actually get because they are going to unlock a box that we're going to need to use to get to the last pillar. So we have to try to get them together so that we can get them all with the same suit. It's easiest to do that if you just charge your sword and you can get them to all get around you because otherwise if you do one at a time it's really hard to time it. So this could take a while. Ugh. Come on. So if I can't get it here in the next couple of tries, which I might not, what I will do is just fast forward until I actually get it. Ugh. Alright, we'll try it a few more times. And I'll save you guys the rest. Uh, <laughs> if it, whoa, what the hell? Okay, I guess I got it. Even though it gave me the incorrect sign, sound, apparently it worked. Alright, so we have another room with uh, floor tiles that we have to dodge. Luckily we have our massive shield now that takes up half our body. Seriously, it's like a major upgrade. The original shield was like the size of uh, one of our feet. And now this shield is like half our entire body. That's crazy. But here is pillar number three. But first, let's blow some holes in the wall so that we can get to pillar number four eventually. So yes, we're gonna have to go all the way around eventually again just to get to pillar number four. But first, let's take out three. All right, so now to get to four, we have to go back along the route we already did and retrace our steps one more time. And we'll take our good friend with us, the steel ball. Kind of like the old classic ball and chain. Huck it down here. 
And the key is we need it on the other side of this little crystal switch down here so we can take it with us. Basically along that route we've already done. So let's throw it down here and retrace our steps. You do want to be very careful because if you fall in the pits here, you're going to fall down to the first level and that resets the steel ball, so you're going to have to redo it. Hey, I avoided a rupee. That's pretty impressive. Showed a lot of restraint on my part. So let's use our boomerang again. Such a great item. Definitely worth trading the shovel for. Alright, and since we already took out those suit guys, we should be able to just walk past here, go through the room, and we should be good to go. Ugh. Or they can come back and respawn so that we have to do it again. Game. <laughs> and then I hit them both at the same time, and it doesn't even stop them on the same suit. This is frustrating. So how many times is it going to take, viewers? Can we get it? Ugh. I think that was four. Come on. Yes! Alright. Thank goodness. Now we're done with those guys for good. Or at least for now. <laughs> This game likes to respawn and redo elements like that in later dungeons. So we might have to see those guys again. Who knows? Well, I know. But uh, you'll find out once we get there. Yes, yes, we've done this already. Okay. So now let's take our bomb path. We'll destroy pillar number four, and that will be it for the first part of dungeon number seven. Eh, 20 rupees, not bad. Once we get rid of this pillar, that'll set off a cool little cutscene. And then, in my next episode, we will continue on and take on the boss of Eagle's Nest, or Eagle's Tower, or whatever it is. As always, viewers, thank you for watching, and I will see you all in my next episode. So long.